Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with another video for you. And I'm calling this one Be Awesome Birds, Analogous Coloring with Prismacolors. So it's colored pencils. And this set is called the Baby Birds, but it's not for baby cards. I mean, you could make baby cards with it, but it's got these really cute birds in it. And I thought they would be really fun to color. And I'm using the words Be Awesome, and I masked off the today so that I could stamp just the awesome on my paper using my card base as a mask and then I embossed my B on it. So each one of these is going to be a panel on the inside that's going to peek in so you can see a part of the bird and then you open it and you see the full bird and you'll see how that works later on. But for each one of these I'm using analogous colors. Now, a lot of people have trouble choosing colors like how do I know what blends with what? And choosing analogous colors is going to help you the most if you just have no idea what to do. If you want to make a rainbow of colors and make one blend into the other, going along the color wheel is going to be your best bet. So I'm starting with a red-violet kind of color. I'm moving into a red and then keep going around the color wheel. Now, if you need to go look up a color wheel, by all means do that. There's one over on my blog as well. And you can follow along with that color wheel. It's always helpful to have a color wheel website at hand, if not a full color wheel in your possession, something that you tack up on your studio wall or something so that it's handy. So then I'm going to move into oranges as I go around. And with each one of these, as I build up from one color into the next, I'm going over top of the previous color because that's going to create that transitional shade from one into the next. So see when I go into my yellow, and this is a really warm yellow, you can, if you're going further with your rainbow, you can even go into a bright yellow. And, and then I'm gonna color his little wing. Uh, I'm gonna use the same kind of colors throughout all of these images, because I want them all to feel kind of a set of cards. I, something in me likes making sets, even though I don't tend to give them away. But I always figure if there's some, you know, something that comes up, I get, often asked for things for um, for charity auctions and that sort of thing. I thought, well, if that offer comes up in the time that I have made a set of cards, then I'll have a set that I can say, hey, I could offer this up and donate that to charity. And that's one thing that you can do with your cards. A lot of people ask me, where do you send all your cards? What do I do with them all? I love to make them and I don't know what to do with them. Well, find charity events and donate packs of cards to charity events. That's always a fun thing to do to help other people raise money for good causes. Where do you find charity events? Well, look on your community calendar. I've done things for local, really small civic organizations, and they're not crafty type of organizations or anything. They're just, they're, they might be a business association type of thing. There's a lot of different things that will be more than happy to take your contribution toward what they do. I had one that I've been um, giving little things to for such a long time that they actually gave me a little award once and I was like, I don't need a little award. I just wanted to give my stuff away. <laughs> so moving back to the drawing, I'm accenting each one of these with a little bit of black because I'm using my black for my shading. Now you could go in and do orange shading with the orange and or red shading with the red, but it kind of brings a little more unity to an image like this to use black for all the shading and then blend it with each of the colors that it's going over top of. So in the area where the shading is on red, I'm gonna use red to kind of soften that edge on the black a little bit. And you know, I'm using a little bit of uh, kind of a purplish color down here because the purplish is gonna help with the, the, the darkening, the shading on a yellow. Now there's this really cute, cute, cute little flamingo and I found two pinks that I'm going to use here. I'm not going to do the whole rainbow thing here because I was debating whether you could make a pink flamingo into a rainbow flamingo. And I thought I would get some people from Florida potentially angry with me. So this is the one bird that's not going to have a whole lot of rainbow colors in them. So I don't want to make people upset. This is technically not the real coloring of a flamingo because I think they're much brighter and they have a little more white in them. But I wanted them to be really dense in color to go with the feel of the full set of cards that I'm making. And just going through with two different pinks. I started with the darker pink on the outside, lighter pink on the inside, and then I'll go back and do a little bit extra with the darker pink to just create that contrast 
because I didn't put quite enough in there. But notice that I didn't worry about pressing really hard on the first layer because when you start pressing hard, you build up a waxy surface from color pencils. And I didn't want to build up that wax and not be able to adjust it. And with doing layers, I can adjust slowly as I go. Decided to give him a little sharp black point on the end of his little beak and then add some shading. And when you're adding the black shading like this, after you've pressed hard with your pencil, go really light. Don't get really crazy with it because you're drawing over top of wax. So if you if your lines have gotten heavy, it's going to be a lot harder to get that pencil to blend softly. So just use a really light touch and a super sharp pencil. And as always, I'm using my Quite Sharp Pencil Sharpener. Link in the doobly doo if you have trouble sharpening your pencils because this thing is amazing. It's huge and it's loud, but it's amazing at sharpening pencils. Now here you can see that I had my my pencil line there. I left it there. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Sure, I left it on purpose so that you could see that I had drawn those pencil lines when I was creating my doing my stamping in the first place. I put each of my cards together with that panel so that I could get my awesome lined up in the right way through that window. And I did that by drawing the circle on there first. And then I could do my stamping. I could put it in my Misty and do my stamping with my little awesome word. So here I'm doing the same rainbow type of coloring, going from yellow to orange to red to red violet. And then I'm gonna use this little purple color that I had used for shading my yellow and doing some, some of the yellow blending. Use that for the white areas because white always has a color in it because there is shading in white. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that when we color snow, we're always coloring colors so that you can see the white. So again, adding my dark shadows and anywhere where I'm adding that and it needs to be blended a little, blending it with whatever color it was colored over top of. And then some hearts. Now here's this last little birdie. I have no idea what kind of birdie it is. But as you're doing this, I have these stamped in a light color of ink. And it doesn't matter what color or what kind of ink you use. If you use an ink that's a pigment ink, just make sure it's good and dry but you can use any light ink to do this no line coloring. And I don't know where the term no line coloring came from other than it's people that make it look like it doesn't have stamp lines in it. It's kind of just coloring. <laughs> it's yeah, but whatever. But in order to do that, you just do a color that's going to disappear under whatever colors you're coloring. And this one, I used one of my MFT stamps uh, or stamp pads, ink pads, that has very little ink left in it. So if you have one of those ink pads that's almost dead, keep it for stuff like this, because then you'll get a little bit of life out of it. I had to stamp each one of them like three or four times to get them to stamp dark enough that I could see them, but it helped because now I just color right over top of those lines and they disappear. So I'm gonna add a little bit more detail on this guy, give him some funky hair, because I thought that would be cute. Do a little bit of my shading, give him some, some little wing tips, and I can even add extra feathers to his wings, make them a little bit bigger if I want. That's the fun of this whole no line coloring idea, is that you don't have to stick with the lines that are there. You can draw your own. You can give big feet, little feet, whatever you would wish, as long as it covers those stamp lines. For the finishing touch on my cards, I've got them all assembled and I decided to put some little uh, stitch lines around the outside using my Uniball Signo white gel pen. And if you've embossed in gold, you can use a gold Signo pen because they come in gold, they come in silver, and it's kind of fun to make those match as they go all the way around the circle. And I'm not worried about using a template, but you can use a template if you want. Just get a die that's a little bit bigger and cut out a piece of paper to follow along. But look how cute that is. You get a peek from the outside into each one of the cards. So check out stills over on my blog if you wanna pin something. You can watch more videos by clicking on the screen. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I put out at least three videos a week and you don't wanna miss out. You wanna come back and have more coloring fun. So in the meantime, go out and make something beautiful and send it to somebody who needs it.